Um, so this is not the rate talk, but if you want to you know, read your email and do other things, the wireless and the lobby is great and they have comfortable chairs. In here, I have these little things. Some people call them mints. I call them attention grabbing missiles. So, you know, I will feel free to ask questions at any point. Um, I might even answer a few. Oh, uh, you might <laughs> slide number two. Um, I could have put the NDI slide up here and flick by it real fast, like I was like I missed it or something. Um, but I decided not to do that. Uh, but I am here speaking for, for myself, so any you know copyright violations on any images in use are they're they're my fault. I apologize. I will occasionally look at the slides because I. I don't, know. I don't really add a whole lot, but I decided to change the order at the last minute. So, um, had a bunch of titles and they all got rejected. So I don't know how I got stuck with something with IT in it, but you know, hopefully you guys got the gist from John. So now's your chance to run away if you want to run away. Um, so I am. I have a network engineering background, which you know, it's really interested me in this conference because. You know, being surrounded by sysadmins for, you know, two decades, 25 years now working on networking, I love sysadmins. Why did I love sysadmins? Because I never had any desire to be a sysadmin, and I loved the fact that there were sysadmins out there who liked being sysadmins. Um, but in this project, you know, it was a relatively small team, so when we needed someone to, you know, fill this niche, I guess I was the the slow antelope, some might say, which wouldn't come as a surprise by you looking at me. Um, so I want to talk about what the wish list was, how we responded, et cetera. I'm going to try and blow through these slides real fast so we can you know, stare at some states. And if you guys want to share your stuff, we can actually like, you know, look at real data and not just stare at slides. So uh, part one of the asks was you know, having OpenStack typically on single machines, but also on, on clusters for the viral, which is just for network simulation purposes. I think it's viral.info for the web page, but I'm not here to pitch stuff, sell stuff, or anything else. Um, but it's to do you know, live simulations using real images you would put on a network device, either you know, three, five, 100, and then be able to inject network traffic and things like that. Um, that's what it looks like. No, oh, and a lot of the stuff I just said, isn't that fitting? Um, used inside and outside of Cisco, and that becomes part, part of the problem. I think that's the end of the, uh, this is just another tool. It's Eclipse-based, and this gives you an idea of just different types of traffic you know, overlays and ways you can bridge things between virtual and physical, you know, inject routing patterns and have firewalls in there and everything you'd expect from you know, a network simulation tool. Uh, the second part was the, the size of the server may vary. They wanted something that could, you know, have a front end that would run on Windows, Mac, or Linux from a laptop all the way up to an OpenStack cluster. Uh, Multi-vendor from a hardware perspective, they didn't care, you know, we weren't saying it had to be on a Cisco UCS, blah, blah, blah. It didn't matter. Um, so, although, you know, I won't say anything bad about AMD while the recorder's on. Um, so not just OS agnostic, but trying to be bare metal agnostic as well. Uh, the install options we wanted to give were you know, OVAs, because that was kind of the easiest for, I could you know, have a stick with an OVA on it, hand it to someone in the room if they had Fusion on their laptop, if they were running Workstation or Player or you know, anything else, they could pull the OVA off and, and run it. And then ESXi for, you know, obviously ESXi for kind of the mid-range when people wanted to put it on a shared. And then ISO, but also allow the ability for, you know, bare metal. So when I was thinking about, you know, how I organized my states, you know, a lot of these had to come into play. Um, the configuration options for everything from the, open, the host layer, the OpenStack layer, and even the viral layer had to be dictated by the users. Couldn't put anything in pillars, there was no point. They had the complete flexibility to change you know, what the IP addresses were in use, 
the host names, you know, MySQL passwords, anything related to, you know, authentication. It was completely dictated by, you know, the, the minion. Um, customers have root and they have the ability to do whatever they want to the machines, which I know is interesting, but whatever. Um, right now it's, it says over 350. That's about right. Over 350 options, and that includes all the layers, you know, I just mentioned. Um, all the software control and updates are, everything had to be written for, you know, the pull and push to get turned around here. But none of the minions, or on a standard thing for me, are actually running salt minion. Everything is salt call based. You know, so it's not masterless, although it can be masterless, but it is salt call based. So the people that are running these boxes feel in control of what software is going on there and they can watch the flow and things like that. Um, actually have to pull files, including very large, you know, router VMs across salt, which I know, I haven't heard of anyone else doing that. And the reason I'm stuck doing that is as opposed to just pointing towards an external link is all export control silliness. Um, the same client image, we want it to work worldwide. We wanted it to be able to also run masterless. And I had to also do a, an option for completely off net, which includes all the way down to you know, supplying the Debian packages you know, in a nice big wrapper so literally the box could be disconnected and all the states would have to run and work. Uh, so this is about the point where I just started to smile and, and, and cackle to myself. Um, and that was the best quote I could come up with that, you know, was my state of mind at about this point in the operation. But they kept going. Um, <laughs> and they also, of course, wanted a dev environment with, you know, our middleware and all this other bit and customer support to be able to approximate, you know, right down to a, if we got their configuration file of those 400 variables, being able to load them up and Try and see what the customer is seeing. Nothing unusual there, not rocket science. Um, this is one of the stock early layers. You know, hardware, hardware and or hypervisor varies. Uh, Ubuntu was certainly the first OpenStack. This was, you know, Ice House, and we'll we'll be revving for Kilo after that. Um, I'll get these are all, you know, stuff that are are just. All our packages that are going on top. Oh yeah. Well, we have, considering it was the fall. Yes. Yeah. No. Nothing. So meet the Salt Stack deployment team that could do all this. There's me. There's Chaos Monkey, and there's Cthulhu. <laughs> Notice, not a single sysadmin on the bunch. Not a single security person in the bunch. I am not a sysadmin, nor do I play one on TV. But, be that as it may, uh, get to the salt masters. We have multiple tiers of masters. I'll kind of show you a picture here in a second. Wow, that's cute. Even I can't read that. <laughs> uh, I run the multi-master with PKI for signing certificates. So when, I, when I'm saying multiple tiers of masters, it's just that. And each tier of master will have a different set of signing keys on it. And that's how I, you know, distinguish one from another. Um, I have to do when, you know, we have things like different code branches and how that gets pushed out. I can't really, I have to control it by literally what gets pushed to the master and what the minions can talk to, simply because, as we already talked about, they control the OS. They can set whatever grain they want. They can set whatever environment they want. The only thing I have control over is the key. Is the, is the minion ID. That's it. Everything else, you know, they can ditter with. So the only way I can control who gets what software is literally by pushing what's, what's to the different tiers of masters. I, a great deal of my masters are internet accessible, which has, you know, a lovely, you know, set of, you know, gotchas along with that from a what's the OS choice, you know, how do I, and a good number of them are not bare metal either. So verifying the base image, you know, how do I know that I'm not getting, you know, pulled off, you know, running out of RAM, running encrypted disks, and lots of other, 
you know, paranoia stuff, which is all really basic for people that have been sysadmins for their careers. Not for me, though. Um, next. Uh, basic picture that the thing that's on fire, well, is the Cisco firewall. And more than once, I've wanted to set the people who run it on fire. But um, the, uh, the inside tier of masters and or you know, build servers, and I actually have to, because of the, the various tiers of firewall, enable push to some of my masters so that the you know, build servers or other things can push up through the tiers and you know, push the, around the, the data for accounting or otherwise. Um, uh, these other stuff you can't see on the slide are uh, geographic. We have four external masters in the US, three in, three in Europe, two in Asia, two in Australia. Um, and all of those, as far as the going back to the general public, they all have the same signing key at any point. So if you got that OVA from me, you could chime in through any of the masters around the world. So we can ship the same OVA wherever, and it'll just work. No questions, or I just scared you with the mint thing. Um, we we do not run Syndic. I played with Syndic, you know, a little bit last summer, but I ran out of kittens, so. I ran away from Syndic, and that just meant, as you've heard from multiple different talks, it, yes, it does mean a lot of manual or more manual than Syndic, you know, distributing the preceded keys that I have, distributing that, that information out, anything basically that can't be done through GitFS for security or other reasons. No one like the kitten in a blender joke? God. <laughs> tough room, tough room. Um, Pillar settings, I don't really have much in, in the pillar. I have little details like the number of VMs anyone can you know, spin up on their, on their little sim. And I do have hooks in there as far as what branches they're able to pull, but I can't rely on just that simply because, again, people can kind of you know, ditter everything except for ID uh, and, and router images. Sorry, I'm trying to get through all this. My top is unbelievably boring. Um, you know, it is, you know, a base. I do try and keep it very thin uh, with the custom modules we've, we've written. I want people to be able to run high state to do things like pick up custom modules and so I can see the grains that are set, et cetera, without having, without pouring a lot of, you know, software updates and requests on them. So I actually have a very thin uh, top. Uh, as I said before, a, you know, 95% of my work is done through uh, salt call. Um, salt call is the, the bastard cousin. I had red-headed stepchild, but I told, was told that was politically incorrect. So the bastard cousin of salt. It has its own set of problems. Things like master shuffle don't work. So if you, you know, try, and, as we talked about, a single OVA, which has a set of masters, you flood it out there. Everyone's going to be just beating the tar out of the very first one in the list. Yeah, that's just one of those got yous. We, we have somewhat worked around it by just, you know, the crudest of all measures, round robin DNS, just to try and, you know, spread things around a bit. And people also, if they're not in the US, um, they'll switch uh, to their own regions. And various, you know, bugs that I think I run into and unique only because I just don't know that. How many people use salt call in the room? My first question. Like, as, now, do you use it or do you use it as, like, a, a, the primary thing over salt? Not primary, just as a, yeah, okay. Yeah, I just, things like this are just wonderful to explain to someone when they can't connect to a master for whatever reason, they turn wireless off, they're using their mouse as a foot pedal, whatever, that instead of just saying, I can't talk to a master, you get that. That's just awesome. Um, uh, occasionally, depending on which versions of uh, whatever it is, uh, the different encryption engines, we'll see random errors. 
Um, how I do all the minions, you know, the software configuration I was talking about, we actually just start with an INI, and I wanted to do it with an INI versus people just taking the grains, A, for comments, and B, for portability. So if people go from one release to another just by putting in a new OVA, they could just take the INI file from one machine to another machine, slam it on, and it would configure. So the INI sets all, all of the grains. Um, we already talked a bit about pillar. We have salt call, you know, reaching out periodically to, it's, I don't want to call it a license, but it's to refresh the software key and also just to verify that occasionally people are checking in with us because we are a small team. We are not forcing, we're asking politely. And you see how polite I can be that they keep their software up to date and by having them occasionally come in and refresh, uh, that's, one of the ways we're enforcing that. Uh, this is, I don't put anything in the actual, whatever, Etsy Salt Minion or Etsy Salt Master. Some of that is like Ubuntu Fallout that whenever you rev, it wants to, you know, revamp that file with the latest version. So I, this is it. This is the entire, you know, everything that goes into a Minion. A Master, obviously the, the pub key signing that it verifies. Master Shuffle for what it's worth, that's really, again, only there for the ones that actually um, have a minion, and you know, upping some things like the, the master alive interval and other things I have to do for large files. Um, master features that I use a great deal. Um, I do have the minion push to, you know, or whatever it is, push to, uh, not having push file recurse is just incredibly annoying because it just sends the whole directory up every time. I haven't played with Minion FS. That's one of the things that's on the list. State aggregate, which, was that there before 2014-7? I don't know. That's about when I turned it on in the fall, and it's been a nice win uh, as far as the actual time to install all the various layers from OpenStack to our software layers. And again, uh, extensive, well, it's 100% use of the multi-master uh, PKI, even, in, even internally, where I run the salt masters in open mode, I still have that turned on again. So internally or externally, it's still the same OVA. I'm giving them the exact same thing, but you know, for our sales force that doesn't like to type in the eight characters and copy in a preceded key because that's too tough, they can just put the OVN, OVA in, point at the internal uh, salt masters, and they're done. This is everything that's in my master, nothing exciting. State aggregate, obviously the, the signature stuff, open files, upping the, the, the worker threads. Um, yeah, absolutely nothing exciting for anyone in this room. Um, OpenStack deployment is from, you know, whatever, two years ago, well, 18 months ago when I started trying to do it. It's gotten tremendously easy. I didn't make it to the OpenStack in five minutes. I'm not exactly sure how it was ending at the end of five minutes, uh, but still, it's improved a great deal. Uh, I saw in 2015, well, 2015 two, although I'm not sure what the two means anymore. Hey, John, what does the two mean at the end of 2015 two? But it was, was month, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here we are on, you know, February the 38th. Okay. Um, uh, I had to get that out of my system now before Tom's Q&A, otherwise you know, I would have not been able to restrain myself. Uh, so for those that you know, are doing salt call, it, it is kind of a pain. Not having the orchestration, being able to use that is disappointing, and obviously no salt run because you're stuck on a minion. Uh, one of the other things you know, I do, and the reason I'm talking about this is later on, Yes, uh, you can actually see the states. I actually allow OpenStack reconstructions, and what I mean by that is, again, when you get the OVA, it's a completely built and done system, but it's done with a host name of like viral.viral.info. Well, if you wanted to take that OVA and actually install it on something and change the host name or whatever, we wanted to be able to allow that. So, you know, it's not just starting from zero. I have to start from a completely built system with built networks and everything else, and then essentially be able to, you know, 
tear half the bridge down and then rebuild half the bridge. So a lot of my state files are kind of gruesome and they have to account for that, make sure nothing is there before trying to build it. If that made any sense at all. Uh, again, I wouldn't say my features from hearing this week are the slightest bit exciting. Um, I use a lot of the OpenStack config just because it's there for INI file and it's easier than calling out to something like Credini. I don't know if anyone else, um, you know, and when I say I use it, it's one of those if I have 50 variables in any given INI file, I do the Jenga bit and have it all nicely, you know, in a template. If I'm just changing one variable, a lot of times, yeah, okay, I'm lazy. I'll just change the one variable uh, and be done with it. This is a pretty standard looking line at the top of a lot of my states. So, you know, calling it, you know, before setting it, calling and seeing if there's anything in the pillar for it. If there's not, having that default, you know, be a, be a grain pole for if it's set there. And if it's not, having a, I guess, the last fallback uh, in place if nothing is set. Um, what we took from, you know, helium, you know, a lot of, you know, only if throughout now, only if and unless everywhere. How many people are using the GPG render? Oh, so disappointing. <laughs> um, and we did see a lot of improvements over with salt SSH. I really only use that for bootstrapping more than anything else, either the, the masters or other bits, but certainly what was there I really liked. Uh, with every day I'm adding more check commands, which is really nice for the varying OpenStack installations just at every step along the way because, I don't know, if I had to live with fail hard being true, it would just never complete on, you know, with all the options I allow on any given OpenStack installation. Sometimes I just have to let it fail graphically so they can see, you know, no, you can't run a bridge like that. You're supposed to work for a networking company. Anyway, yeah. bitter, bitter, I admit it. Um, all right. All right, what I really wanted to talk about, <laughs> um, one of the things you, you know, we certainly got, um, are you writing the states the way I did, and having it more salt call based, is it fit really nicely? If you remember all the way back to, you know, a half an hour of your life ago, talking about, you know, one of the things they wanted were the various build artifacts, you know, coming out of this, and that led me to Packer. It's a very nice system, to, you know, start with an ISO, you know, start with a, a known good thing, and then be able to at the end have, you know. You know, OVAs for the different things I mentioned from ESXi to the various, you know, VMware desktop packages and also wrap up an ISO for bare metal installs. Um, all basically done inside, you know, in, oh, in Vagrant Boxes. Vagrant Boxes, yes. Um, the salt builder inside, you know, Packer is, it's not super sexy for, for what it is, but it's there and it works. Um, a lot of times, you know, I've been trying to clean it up, but I am going to be, you know, showing people exactly what's in my Packer, Packer file if anyone ever wants to, you know, take a look. Um, it's, a lot of it is just the doing things like salt calls from shell outs, uh, simply because with the salt builder, it's easier if you have it organized, it's in a, you know, a top file and it just kind of builds like that. But I know a lot of people have it easily constructed. So from that top file and just calling high state once, it actually will lay out the way they want it to. So their lives would be easier than mine. Um, also, you know, I am using the other builders. I'm not just, you know, VMware certainly is, you know, my primary builder, simply because I'm cranking out OVAs. But I have spun up all the additional builders just as, honestly, it was more amusing as far as the, would this work right? You know, could I get this all working? And the answer was yes, it actually 
worked and I was able to add it far easier than I would have guessed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's n not far from perfect. Far from perfect. Um, trying to build OVAs is, is a whole lot of, you know, cutting the heads off chickens and waving them in the air. But you can get it done. I am, you know, living proof that you can get it done. Um, you know, yeah, 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 don't even want to talk to that slide. Um, so it's one of those, if that is important to you, being able to go from, you know, I know a lot of the people I talked to this week, it's all about, you know, you know, clusters and or, you know, hardware racks. For us, we needed it down to a, you know, a developer or a customer service person could have it on an OVA, could have it in a vagrant box, even if that vagrant box would spin up multiple machines. And a lot of times, they can even spin up effectively an OpenStack cluster, you know, under Fusion or whatever to really simulate what someone might be seeing on an actual, uh, on their actual OpenStack cluster. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, then there's Vagrant. Um, I, I'm sure, how many people use Vagrant or produce artifacts for Vagrant? Okay, don't need to talk about it. You guys know how you know, interested it is. Um, yes, we even had to use it for the customer support people and train them how to use it. Um, Vagrant Share we found very handy, but a lot of our stuff, you know, our, our firewalls do really unfriendly things with making some parts of Vagrant Share work. But when it does, I have to tell you, I found it to be very handy as far as debugging either dev or customer support when they get it in a jam just being able to, you know, have the handle and log in. Have people played with Vagrant Share much? Huh. It's, it's worth an evening or something like that, even if you look at it and say, wow, that's a neat toy and never use it again. Um, woo, blank slide. Ah. Ta-da. Oh. This is the part where I want you pointing the camera at me because I'm so sexy. Just not the screen. I don't really care if you point it at the ceiling, you point it at yourself. Um, so, you know, I'm, one of the reasons I come here, one of the reasons I do, you know, gone to the meetups and try to go to the meetups is I learn from every single state file I look at. Every single thing I look at, even if it's a good example, a bad example, someone's doing it, you know, in an interesting way or a different way. It has me thinking just like, you know, could I take advantage of that? And so I just wanted to, you know, put a plug as far as the ripping off everything you find. Um, you know, what's currently up there is what I use. A lot of it is prehistoric. Some of it isn't in use anymore. But it's one of those, you know, I think I still have the, the sunshine in there. And by the way, I, I don't have any problem giving that out after. Um, oh, I think it's, it's later. I really trying to encourage people, if you've done things properly, and I know you have because it's not a difficult concept to grasp, as far as the not having anything secure or secretive in your state files or in your reactor files, share them. I mean, it's one of those, what's the worst thing that could really happen? You get a pull request you don't like? Okay, well, that's not too, that's not too bad. Um, I mean, I'm sure I'll get lovely amounts of criticism as far as the why'd you do it this way and that way and I'll have to explain for the different installation modes I have, I have to do things like I can't have a, a pip that leads directly into, you know, a start or a restart because the timing just doesn't work right. And so, but, you know, that's, that's part of it. But I wanted to really encourage people to you know, try and go to the meetups, and even if you won't learn anything because you're just the smartest person in the room and you know you're the smartest person in the room, that's fine. Still, you know, try and help the community get out there. And I wanted to, to plug a few people. You can point it back at the screen now if you're not listening to something more entertaining than me. Okay. Um, uh, some of the stuff over the last 18 months, you know, there was the, before there was the official SALT, uh, before it got rolled in, sorry, to, to Vagrant. 
uh, there was the, the plug-in, and a, a few other people I wanted to call out. Uh, but really want to try and plug the meetups if they aren't running in your area, start one. You know, if nothing else, you know, just having people look at your stuff can certainly be beneficial. Um, no one else talked about editors, and so I wanted to bring it up just to ask, what do folks use as far as an editor for modifying states? Just don't say vi. You can say anything but vi. Yeah, yeah just there's always at least one evil person in the room. Anything else? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. And then the second person is going to say Emacs in VI mode. Anyway, um, so I tinker with a bunch of things, you know, from you know Sublime with a, a mod, and I tinkered with Atom for a while with the one package. It was nice, you know. It called out some things, but really, you guys are just using a basic editor. Yeah. Okay. I make too many mistakes for that. And always just forgetting the random odd colon. Um, uh, GitFS, you know, I don't think I do anything unusual uh, except, and not just for, you know, dev, QA, stable, or whatever. Even when I'm doing fixes, I'll use commonly named branches that way on the vagrant boxes that are essentially pre-rigged to look at certain branches like bug fix or whatever, they could rapidly pull down and test, you know, salt states. Oh, well, I mean, bug, bug fix is one, salt fix is another. Um, no. Uh, let's put it this way. There, there, there was another one for a while that, that did live on in a vagrant box that was named effing colon. <laughs> yes, I do have a problem with colons. Um, but it's, all it is, as long as it's a, a consistent name, you can have things like the vagrant boxes or even straight up OVAs that are pre-built to that environment. So literally all you have to do is, is launch them and they'll automatically get in the state you want to be to immediately start testing. You know, I wanted it for, you know, the customer service and other people to be able to do Vagrant up, go get a cup of coffee, come back, and it's, they've got something close, minus the actual simulation launch, of what a customer might be seeing. Um, and I was kind of surprised. GitFS, how many people use GitFS? That's it. Which plugin do you guys use? No, there were two of you. Which plugin do you use? Uh, Git Python, the default, or? No, I'm actually using my Git. Okay. On what's your base OS? Did you find an easy way to install that? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's one way to describe it. That's not how I'd describe it. I, right now, I'm using Dole, which simply because it's consistently easy to install, and I found it to be less buggy than Git Python. Uh, but you don't get, you know, if I want to do the alternate branches, then I'm having to do the 15 steps while standing on, on one foot, swinging a cat to install PyGit2 on Ubuntu, because they don't make it easy. Um, uh, okay. For you know, state testing at any given time, I just keep vagrant boxes literally. Once you have this set up, I guess this is the point of my message, once you have it set up as far as all the states being able to flow into a, a packer builder, it's very simple in, your, in the great build system. <laughs> uh, and no, yes, people can say Jenkins to me all they want to. They can take their 200 megs of, of Java fun and go somewhere else. Um, you know, I can have it all in there, so in any one of my builds, I have things laid out in various states. So depending on what part of the install or what configuration, it's easy to build yet another build artifact. So again, I can start up, you know, it's very Dockerish. There, for your buzzword bingo cards, I said the word Docker during my presentation. Um, I have it very close to your setup. So again, the goal for me is always the doing a vagrant up how quickly I can get into a situation either to test a, a new state or a new installation. You know, 
uh, mechanic, uh, or whatever. Uh, and I actually use our own stuff for, for scale testing because it's really easy for me to throw up as far as a you know, 30, 40 you know, VM um, you know, salt setup with masters and minions and everything else. Uh, but it's not that difficult to do. You could write a shell script to do it in, you know, with KVM if you really wanted to. Um, oh, you know, when, you know, I, I have no problem with people looking at my states, but understand this is the, you know, the best practices document I went from straight from the salt stack page. <clears throat> um, but again, nothing disinfects like sunshine. You know, if you're having, you know, trouble or if you're finding that, you know, it's taking you 15 steps to do something, it's very rare that I've found that it should take you 15 steps to do something. You just need to unlock your head and it, it might be the person that doesn't really know salt who would come up and say, well, why didn't you just, you know, change the ordering or do the require cross-linking like this? Or just the fact that they can't read it, you know, the, just the way it, it, you know, the actual state file reads isn't clear enough. Um, it helps, it helps you improve, improve your states. Um, and again, even if you're selfish, you know, it's still worth it to get it out there. Um, and yeah. So, you know, among just pimping the, the wonderful enterprise GUI, <clears throat> what other folks, you, you, know, you know, what are the aha moments for, for folks this week? I'm just kind of curious. Certainly there was lots of reactor talk, um, which I currently don't use at all, I'll be honest, but I'm certainly looking in more into or more interested in this, this week. I mean, what are folks, you know, taking home with them as far as the, you know, this package or that tool or anything else? that they're interested in trying. That's still, that's, that's the mythical February release though, right? Yes, yes. And I'd like a pony. <laughs> um, well, so, so the other thing I, I think I have in my slides is, you know, because my travel agent and I don't get along, I am here in lovely Salt Lake City for yet another evening because I fly out tomorrow morning. So I'm happy to sit down and, and walk through it with you to whatever extent. Um, yeah. I'm sure this is a perfectly fine place to live. Again, it's kind of like the I'm happy they're sysadmins, so I don't have to be one. I'm happy that people like living in Salt Lake City, because I wouldn't want to. Um, and if you happen to be anyone from the Bay Area, so, you know, I am going to be try and do the Silicon Valley meetup at one location or another. Unfortunately for some of you, if you're really in San Francisco, the default location will probably be Cisco, unless someone else, you know, offers the location. It, I just have it there because it's relatively easy for me. Um, you know, some of that will be formal presentations depending on what, if John can get formal presentations or if someone volunteers. Other than that, it's just going to be sitting around, you know, tinkering or, you know, staring at states or what people have done with the new features or the old features. So it doesn't, well, have to be all that exciting, although we can like, I don't know, throw fireworks or something at one another really comes down to it. Um, I just wanted to end, for those that don't want to even muck with my repo and looking at the stuff that's on there, you know, this is a, just a standard, you know, state file for me. It's absolutely not exciting. The only reason I, I picked pip is because pip just annoys me because I love on changes. I use on changes all over the place, except if you use upgrade with pip, Everything's a change. I did absolutely nothing, but it's still a change, and it can have wonderful repercussions. So I was in a particularly pip-hating mood this morning, and so that's why, or a couple days ago, and that's why I picked this one. So a couple things with, you know, version fixing. A lot of if-then-else, depending on, these are all uh, 
pulled from grains or pillars from that line you saw earlier. But again, I don't try and hold itself out. If anything, I've gone out of my way to try and make it as simple as possible, um, just simply because I just don't want to debug some uber complex thing because you know, the, the person that has to answer the, the phone from the current salt stack team, well, we wouldn't want Cthulhu answering the phone, so it's really me. Um, which means I try and make things as simple as possible. And, you know, <laughs> I, I am here, you know, so I'm happy to, you know, walk through, if, if you guys are willing to share, share with me, look through your stuff, you can, you know, pour through my stuff and just do the, why did you do this? Why did you do that? that? This is the ugliest piece of code I've ever seen. I'll probably be the one that agrees with you. Um, and, you know, please provide, you know, feedback on the talk. That's not the best picture, but the other one had a, had a really blatant copyright on it that was like a real hamster in there. And uh, anyway, this is the best I could do. Uh, but please do give, you know, uh, <laughs> you won't jam the blender. Um, <laughs> Oh, look, you can't read my email. This is perfect. I wish I could have this slide deck all the time. Uh, it is just ejk at cisco.com. And yes, the cake was a lot. Uh, any questions, any, any thoughts? I'm happy to show you know, just about anything. I just want to put the thing up there. Yeah, go ahead. Just an open stack question. You guys do, you're, you're, you're doing Linux bridging. Are you doing Linux bridging or are you doing VXLAN, VLANs? It's Any of that stuff? Cur currently we're running, you know, Linux Bridge VXLAN. Okay. We, you know, originally, and you'll certainly see this in some of the older versions of the states that are still in there. It was OVS because iteration one was, well, Essex, right. and Gri Grizzly and OVS. And then I looked at what OVS was really doing for me, and I chuckled for a bit, and then switched to Linux Bridge. Okay. Uh, and it will probably remain that way. So you're just using the ML2, pl ML2 plugin? Correct. Okay, thanks. And that's a good example with a lot of that stuff specifically in like ML2 where I think in the Linux bridge, it's the, that goes into the, what I, what I took the extra step to put into Django versus the, I just have to change these two lines and just did with the, and now I forget what it is, the OpenStack config, you know, I and I, you know, replace tool. Didn't have to. I mean, I, in my configurations, I have to deal with the fact that people might have DHCP on the API interface or run static, which is, you know, not a whole lot of fun. Neither is having it set up for, it's effectively, it's, a, it's an all-in-one, but I had to have an all-in-one with enough interfaces and configuration that it could be, you know, an all-in-one for someone, and then, but then they could stack, you know, compute OVAs, which, are not public yet, but the compute OVA is on top of that and it would just work. There was another question. Did yeah, you change your uh, mind? Would you put your Git repo back up? That was one. And number two was, um, how long did it take you to go from that initial concept planning stage to something that you were willing to distribute to other people? Oh, it's, so it's one of those, where it is now, it's, Constantly moving, like, you know, yes, I will be happy to, but as soon as the camera turns off, because it's, that's just one of those, I don't know, I like to see people that have gotten it, and that's all, it's not, so it's a mild form of paranoia. Um, uh, sorry. So it's constantly changing. There's old stuff, there's new stuff. Even when you look at it, you're gonna see things that look like, you know, the best practices document and everything is relatively nice and neat, and you're gonna see older stuff in there that still, I'm sure I still have some file seds in there and other, you know, different ways. I've monkey patched, you know, OpenStack because, you know, it's one of those, I'm not a sysadmin, so when someone came along and said, you should just run your own Debian package builder and spit them out yourself, and I just went, I could do that, but I choose not to. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of file patch and things like that in there. But, you know, it's one of those, you know, not only am I a network person, this is, you know, doing this and maintaining this is about, 
20%, 15% of my job. So literally, you'll, you could see evolution in there of how I changed. And so I thought, well, I, you know, I should really come and then clean it all up, you know, as well as I can, and then distribute it. But at the same time, you know, if I'm going to try and preach it, as far as the people could learn from everything, including bad code, well, you're certainly going to have some bad examples in there, you know, to look at. Or if nothing else, again, some of it's going to be bad. Some of it's going to be a, I had to do it either because of, you know, salt bugs, not that there have ever been salt bugs, or, you know, varying things like for the completely off net builder, you had to do things in a, in a certain way to make it, you know, to make it work right. But it certainly doesn't build OpenStack in five minutes. Um, any other questions? I don't know how far ahead or behind on time I am. We, we are right on time. You actually. didn't ask a question. You need to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. <laughs> you you asked for that, Ed. Uh, well, I so. <laughs> Not only, uh, not only are Ed's uh, uh, presentations extremely informative, they're, they're always uh, yeah. extremely entertaining. So let's just give him a round of applause for his time and efforts.